Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again in today's video. An outrageous HOA foreclosed on my inherited farm and auctioned it off for profit without my permission or knowledge. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the story. And the first one is titled Never Mess With A Mechanic. So it was just a few weeks ago when this whole mess went down. So Kyle is one of those who think their military service entitles them to special treatment. Oh, and here's a racist dickbag too. Our boss Mike flat out refuses to have Kyle in the shop during business hours because of his bigoted crap but he will grudgingly work on Kyle's truck after closing if no one else is around. The usual deal is Kyle botches some repair job on his own truck and then expects us to fix his mess for next to nothing using his veteran status as a guilt trip. This time, Kyle claimed that he had fixed the brakes on his beat up old pickup, but somehow managed to disable the rear brakes entirely. The truck was one crapped out part away from the junkyard. Mike was out of town and had explicitly told me not to deal with Kyle's nonsense while he was gone. But sure enough, Kyle rolls up to the shop today, right as I'm locking up to head home. He starts demanding I fix his truck immediately. I told him Mike would handle it when he got back. That pissed Kyle off and he muttered some racist BS under his breath before I told him to piss off until Mike returned. I started driving home but barely a minute later I noticed that Kyle's truck is following me matching my lane changes. Since I live about 40 miles away I knew his crappy truck would not be able to keep up with me if I took the long rough route through the hills. I didn't want to risk outrunning him and causing a wreck either so I called up my buddy Rob who lives maybe 10 miles out in the desert and told him I thought I was being followed. Told Rob that I would swing by his place and take the scenic route to lose this a-hole. Rob said he would meet me halfway in case he needed to scare Kyle off. Well, the scenic route is this 7 mile stretch of rough desert road that will tear up any truck without serious off-road mods. Lots of locals use it to test their desert racers and rock crawlers. When I hit the turnoff for that road, sure enough, Kyle's headlights turned in behind me. At that point, I killed my regular headlights, flipped on my extra bright off-road lamps and just floored it. Made sure to hit those first big jumps hard to really punish his sorry excuse for a suspension. Right before the jumps I kicked up a huge cloud of dust and then killed all my lights and pulled over to wait. Few seconds later I saw Kyle's headlights appear bouncing like crazy as he cleared that first jump. The violent shaking told me his suspension was already wrecked from that big drop. I flipped all my lights back on to make sure he could see where I was going and then just took off towards Rob's place. When I got there, Rob and his brother were waiting with these big crap-eating grins. Rob said he had seen my lights coming from over a mile away but never spotted Kyle behind me. So I just laughed and said, looks like he missed that first jump, guess I would better call rescue. We hung out for a bit more, shooting the crap before I took a different trail back towards the highway home. Later that night I got a call that Kyle was physically fine but his truck was literally bent in half where the cap met the bed from that 5 foot drop he took. The dumbass actually tried claiming that he had just gotten lost on his way home. First thing the next morning, I called up Mike and let him know about Kyle's little stunt, said that I wanted that a-hole trespassed from the shop property. Mike took my side, said he is done putting up with Kyle's entitled BS. We got the sheriff's department to officially trespass Kyle and I saw his mangled truck sitting at another shop down the road when I drove by later. The damn thing looked like a pretzel from hitting that jump so hard. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Yeah, ripe stars, I would say never mess with a mechanic. That guy was clearly too stupid to know that. Anyway, if you enjoyed the story, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support me. Thank you so much and the next one is the title story and it is titled HOA foreclosed on my inherited family farm in South America without notice auctioned it off and kept the profits. I had an idyllic childhood all due to my family's beautiful farm in South America. It was a lush piece of land in the country and it made for the perfect childhood. I grew up chasing chickens, running through corn stalks and basking in the South American sun. The farm belonged to the family, it was technically my grandparents land but the whole family chipped in and every member of my family called the farm home at some point in their life. That being said, when adulthood came I was the only one interested in running the farm long term. 
When I went to college, I studied agriculture as well as business, so when I inherited the land, I would be ready for it. Despite my South American roots, I was fortunate enough to be a US citizen too, which gave me an advantage when a critical job with the Department of Agriculture opened up. I knew it would mean being far from home, but the job would give me so much insight and experience to bring home to the farm. Plus, my devoted extended family members would remain on the farm, making sure every day-to-day -day operations was running smoothly. I'd been working in the position for about 5 years and the farm was running smoothly in my absence. I had even been able to implement some of the ideas I had learned on the job remotely. I looked forward to the day I would make my triumphant return to the farm, but that mental image was dashed one fateful day. My phone rang in the late afternoon and the screen showed my cousin Julio's name. Julio ran the farm in my absence. He was my greatest asset on the property and my closest friend, but when I picked up my phone that day, he did not sound like himself. Julio was audibly crying as he said hello. Que, que paso? I asked with concern. Something bad is happening here, Julio said between sobs. Tell me, I insisted. Bulldozers. A group of men showed up with bulldozers and a letter, Julio said. What kind of letter? I asked. It's from the HOA. It claims that they foreclosed on us and auctioned off the land a week ago, said Julio. Foreclosed? I have payment receipts and I always pay on time. They cannot foreclose on us when we are in good standing, I said. I know, I know. I tried to talk to them, but they are not listening to reason. They say you no longer have a stake in the land. I think you need to come home, man, said Julio. A few moments later, I hung up the phone, seething with rage. How could this have happened? I was not about to let the HOA get away with this scam, so I started shopping for plane tickets right away. My trip home was stressful. It was a long drive, followed by a long flight, finished with another long drive, and the entire time my mind reeled through the HOA nightmare. Not even the sight of my beloved farm calmed me down, because what was normally a pretty picture was marred by the presence of bulldozers parked along the property line. That strengthened my will for battle, I settled in and then took the paperwork down to the HOA office. I was determined to confront the board and make them remove their equipment from my land, or I would have to take legal action as well. The HOA board was made up of 5 nosy busybodies. They were all locals, but I'm not even sure if any of them had any real estate or a land management experience. They were all present when I arrived at the HOA building. I waited patiently in their lobby for my chance to speak with them. Finally, an assistant came and ushered me to a conference room in the back of the building. There, the board members were arranged around the table, doing their best to look important. I took a seat at the one empty seat and made my case. Holla, I said, determined to be cordial. My name is Marcus Aura and I'm the owner of the farm. Hello Marcus, everyone murmured. My family has owned this land for over a century. It is an operational family farm that provides for a large extended family. We also provide for the community through sales and trade of our produce. A few of the board members nodded and smiled. I felt pretty good. However, recently a crew of demolition workers showed up on my family's land stating that we didn't own it anymore. I'm an honest man and I want to do right by my community and my family. I pay on time and never violate the rules. That is why I'm so confused about how you can get away with seizing my land, especially without informing me. Marcus, a female board member began. I'm so sorry for the stress this has caused. But unfortunately, you were behind on your payments and that gives us the right to recoup our losses. I pay the mortgage on time every month. I brought the receipts. I said, reaching into my briefcase for the papers. There's no need for that. Another board member chimed in. Excuse me? I said. We don't need to review your mortgage receipts because you're right that the mortgage has been paid on time. They said. Then how can you foreclose on my farm property? Well, your farm is in arrears on HOA fees and therefore the only way we could recover our fees was to take action, said the HOA board member. I don't understand. How far behind were we? I asked. It doesn't matter. You did not pay and you lost your land, said another HOA member very carelessly. Excuse me? I said beginning to lose my polite demeanor. You heard me, the man snapped. Now I was really enraged, but before I could say anything, the female board member cut in saying, Everyone calm down please. Marcus, I'm sorry, but that is our situation. If you want to discuss it further, I would suggest coming back with your lawyer. I was shocked at how rudely these people were acting, but I would not give them the satisfaction of watching me lose my temper. 
That is how it's gonna be, I said, and no one said anything in reply. Fine then, you'll be hearing from my lawyers. I left their office in a rage, but more determined than ever to figure this out. There was something fishy about those HOA people. They were all too happy to snap up my land without letting me know, which made me wonder how many other residents had fallen victim to their shady ways. I headed to my cousin Julio's home where I was staying. I immediately set to work pouring through old mortgage and HOA letters and documents. It took some digging, but I finally found something helpful. Somehow, whether it was intentional or not, I don't know, they had been addressing the bills for the HOA fees to a deceased cousin of mine. No one had gotten their mail in years, so the bills went unnoticed. I was nervous to find out what the balance due would be, but when I called the collection office to inform me, the outstanding balance was only about $200. How could that be? After the HOA foreclosed on the farm, they auctioned it off for over $1 million. If the land was worth that much, how can they get away with seizing it over a few hundred bucks? How could they do that and why? I had a dark but gripping thought, what if they are doing this all for themselves? What if they've been terrorizing the locals with lost fee letters and illegal seizures? I wasn't gonna stand by and let these thugs ruin the community that shaped me. No longer would I play nicely with these people, it was time for me to find a great lawyer. A week later my lawyer was able to serve the HOA board with a massive lawsuit. The suit leveled charges against them of price gouging, illegal foreclosure and auctioning off stolen property. The board was anything but pleasant about the accusations. When the processor server showed up at their office, they literally chased him out onto the street. It was ugly, but that was just the beginning. It took two years of stress and fighting to bring the case to the courtroom. Having the case come to trial was a huge relief for me. Win, lose or draw, this trial would bring me the closure I had waited two painful years for. The case began predictably, but it got really exciting when the testimonies began. My lawyer had assembled an incredible group of witnesses to the HOA sports malfeasance. From other locals to employees on the farm to myself, the lawyer thought of just every angle. My cousins all confirmed the story of the horrible day the bulldozers arrived and a neighbor attested to going through a similar experience with a wrongful seizure at the hands of the HOA. I did not want to get my hopes up too high, but after the neighbor's testimony, I could see something on the judge's face that looked like sympathy. The judge called for a recess to review the case and I left the courtroom feeling optimistic. After the break, the judge called for order. He said, It is no secret that I am not a fan of this HOA board. I've tried several cases related to their misdeeds and frankly, repeat offenders like this make me sick. The Aura family has been an asset to this community for decades and this mistreatment of their farm tarnishes the legacy of our great community. That's why I intend to close the book on this matter permanently today. I find the defendant, the Branch Boulevard HOA board, guilty of failure to follow proper notification laws by not informing the plaintiff, Mr. Aura, of their attention to foreclose on his property. I also find the board guilty of collusion to wrongfully seize land for personal profit. Furthermore, upon pouring over some of the documents offered up in discovery, I found damning evidence of multiple statute that the HOA has broken throughout their villainous land grab. That is why I have no choice but to raise the charges against the defendants. Bailiff, please take the defendants to a holding cell to await the scheduling of their sentencing. Congratulations Mr. Aura, your farm is safe. The courtroom was filled with my friends and family and this final pronouncement made the room explode in cheers. I felt tears welling in my eyes, I only wished my grandparents could see how hard I fought for them and our land. I felt so proud and so relieved. A week later I was relaxing on the farm while the HOA board sat through their sentencing. In addition to the farm, the board was made to return the auction money they made and charged with fraud. They were each sentenced to 5 years in prison and barred from public office. It was a small reward but it felt good. The true win was the impeccable view from my family's farm and the knowledge that never again would someone take it away from me. And yeah, ripe stars, at this point, really, every single HOA should know, never mess with farm owners. You will deeply regret it. Anyway, the next one is titled, How bloody do you want your burger? Posted by user future somewhere 766 on r ripe stories, which is our own subreddit. Back quite a few years ago, due to a few options, I was forced to take a job at a fast food joint. It wasn't my ideal job, but rent needs to be paid. The people there were all people that if you were the same age, you could probably be good friends, all except her. We had an assistant manager who thought the world revolved around her, she was nothing but a bully to the females and a BITCH to the males. 
We will call her BM. One night we were slammed with non-stop customers for over two hours. Once we finally served all of them, we started to do the cleanup so we are ready for the next customer. For some reason, BM did something completely stupid and dangerous. She decided to quick mop an area in the kitchen and not tell anyone or put up a warning for a wet floor. Apparently, after about 3 minutes, I came back into the kitchen and hit the wet tile floor and slipped, which caused my hand to slam into the corner of the heating oven. I ended up slicing a 2 inch gash on the back of my hand, there was blood running down my hand. I yelled, who the hell mopped the floor and didn't put up a notice? BM tells me to shut up and get back to work. I said I needed to clean up my hand and she told me that, you were hired to do a job, if you won't do it then I'll fire you. So this Karen caused my injury and then refused to let me have the wound treated and then threatened to fire me because of it. Okay, which, if that's how you want it to be, I slipped into the back and made a call to the owner and told him that if he's not down to the store in the next 5 minutes then the health department will shut them down and I hung up the phone and started to go clean up the blood on me and the floor when BM told me to get back in the kitchen now. Okay, I went back into the kitchen and started making the orders, let's just say that I made quite a mess. Blood on the floors, on the work table, on the wrappers and yes, on the food. After I sent up her first order I told her, remember, you did this to yourself and sent the order up with the wrappers having blood all over them. She looks at me furious and yells, you're fired, get the hell out of here. What she didn't notice was that the owner had just walked into the kitchen. He walked to the front registers and told her to get out of his way. He announced to all that there was a contamination and he was shutting the place down for it to be dealt with. Once everyone had gone, the owner wanted answers. Number one, what happened? BM said I had been slacking off all night and she was tired of it. Number two, why was there blood all over? BM said I did it to myself so that I could go home early. Number three, why was I making food instead of cleaning the injury? BM said I said I needed a day off and she said no, I cut myself and got blood all over me so we would be shut down and I would get my day off. Owner said he would be back to the kitchen in a few minutes. Once the owner was out of the kitchen, BM walked by me and said just loud enough for me to hear, enjoy finding a new job. Apparently money and supplies had been vanishing, so the owner put in security cameras that employees didn't know about. After about 30 minutes, the owner comes back out, looks at BM and says, are you sure that what you told me is true? And that you have nothing to add? BM stood there grinning and said, that's all. Then the owner walked over to the back door and opened it for three medics and two cops walking into the kitchen. BM looked like she was about to pass out from joy until the cops walk over to her and tell her to come with them while the medics came over to start tending to my injury. BM flipped out and ended up being drug out in handcuffs. When the owner went to the back he checked the security camera feed and saw and heard everything that BM and I said and he called the medics and he then noticed that there was something missing in the office and went back in the field to see what happened. In the end I got 5 stitches in the back of my hand, the kitchen was closed for 4 days and BM it turns out was the one who was stealing. What the owner noticed missing was a bracelet and perfume he got for his wife and forgot them at work. It also turns out that the reason that she was mopping the floor in the first place was that she dropped and broke the perfume bottle enough that it was leaking. The cops found the necklace in her locker and the broken perfume bottle out in the dumpster area. In the end BM got 6 months in jail but due to misbehaving she finally got out 4 years later. I guess she just had to cause problems no matter where she is. And the next one is titled Neighbors get what they deserve. I male 23 live in my grandparents garage. It has full electrical and plumbing. I even have fiber optic internet. They had it converted legally to a suite when my oldest cousin went to university in their city. Either way, I'm the youngest cousin and until one of my older relatives kids are ready to go to university, I have a cheap place to live. My grandparents don't no longer drive, but I do. I don't own a car, I use a car share service. The problem is that I always run my grandparents around. I take them to appointments and grocery shopping and to family functions, but I don't mind it at all. I'm saving so much by living with them, I'll be able to have a great down payment for a house when I move out. However, the neighborhood has no private street parking. It is an old neighborhood built before every family had multiple cars and you cannot double park. You'd definitely be a jerk for blocking traffic in one direction, so when we are going to need a car, I always know in advance and arrange my schedule so I can pick one up. Then I park in front of the house so my grandparents can get in safely and off we go. However, a few of the neighbors have started parking in front of the house since we do not. 
This is not usually a problem because, as I stated, we don't own a car, but sometimes this means that I have to park a block away and then come get them. Like I said though, we always schedule our trips. We go grocery shopping the same time every week. Their doctor's appointments are scheduled weeks in advance, so we tell the neighbors and they make sure I can park in front of the house. Until the new neighbors, they have five cars. What they do is, they park one in their garage and four on the street, including two in front of my grandparents' house. I've tried asking them to please be sure to leave a parking spot on the days I need it and they said that there is no private parking spots on the street. So they refuse to leave the spot. I got a handicap parking pass from the city since I'm the driver for my grandparents and I got the city to put a handicap parking spot in front of the house. Anyone with a handicap parking pass can park there, but no one else has one. But the city still treats it like any other zone and has been ticketing cars that park there. Now the neighbors are mad at me because they've been ticketed multiple times and now they've been towed at least once. Neither myself or my grandparents have ever reported them, they are calling me an a-hole for taking up a spot that I don't even need 99% of the time. I feel guilty but my grandpa said I did the right thing. My grandmother wants me to make nice though. So Ripe Stars, what do you think about this story? Do you think that OP is the a-hole or not? Some people on Reddit said, not the a-hole, if it is now a handicapped spot their only legal parking is getting them towed. Comment number two, not the a-hole, normally I roll my eyes a little when people complain about others parking in front of their houses, but your grandparents obviously have enough of a need that you are qualified for the disabled parking tag and the spot. Your neighbor knows what disabled parking is and chose to ignore that, that's on them. And yeah, ripe stars, obviously people that fraudulently park in handicap parking even though they have no business being there, deserve no empathy or respect in my opinion. Let me know what you think about this story in the comments. And yeah guys, if you cannot get enough of my content, please don't forget to check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on all major podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts. Furthermore, you can find bonus content by going to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or by clicking the join button here on YouTube. For a small monthly fee, you will get access to dozens and dozens of exclusive videos you won't find anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow.